Thousands of meters below the surface, a submersible glides across the darkness. It catches something massive. This isn't science fiction. It's not even that rare. It's just another day in the Mariana Trench, the deepest, darkest, deadliest place on Earth. And what lurks down here might not want us to leave. Somewhere beneath the crashing waves of the Pacific Ocean, beyond where light can reach and where pressure would flatten a human body like paper, there's a place that has swallowed entire expeditions, defied every instrument we've thrown at it, and still refuses to give up its secrets. This is the Mariana Trench. It's not just the deepest place on Earth, it's the most alien, the most hostile, and perhaps the most dangerous. And we've barely touched it. To understand the Mariana Trench is to leave behind everything familiar. You descend into a world where the rules of life, physics, even geology, begin to break. First, the facts. The trench lies in the Western Pacific, east of the Mariana Islands. At its lowest point, the Challenger Deep, it plunges nearly 11,000 meters below sea level. That's deeper than Mount Everest is tall. You could stack the tallest skyscrapers on Earth on top of each other and still not touch the bottom. But it's not just depth, it's design. The trench is a narrow V-shaped scar in the seafloor, forged by subduction, the process where one tectonic plate dives beneath another. Here, the older, colder Pacific plate is being pushed under the smaller Mariana plate. That simple motion, crust sliding beneath crust, created the deepest abyss on the planet. And it's still moving, still grinding, still building tension. Every meter down, the pressure builds. By the time you reach the bottom, each square inch is under more than a thousand atmospheres of pressure, about eight tons per square inch. Imagine wearing the weight of 50 jumbo jets on your chest. Now imagine being alive under it. Down here, there's no sunlight, no photosynthesis, no warmth. The water is barely above freezing. The darkness is so complete, so all-consuming, that animals evolve without eyes. Some glow. Others feel their way through the void with pressure-sensitive nerves and chemical trails. And they are strange. The Hadal snailfish is a ghost drifting through liquid black. It has no scales, no real skeleton, just gelatinous flesh and barely their cartilage, shaped by millions of years of extreme adaptation. Its body is pumped full of a chemical called trimethylamine N-oxide, TMAO, a natural pressure stabilizer that stops its proteins from folding like paper under the crushing weight. Then there are the amphipods, oversized scavengers that thrive where nothing else should. Their secret, aluminum, these deep-sea crustaceans extract it from sediments and reinforce their shells with it, like underwater tanks built for oblivion. They travel in swarms. They tear apart carcasses with insectoid efficiency. Imagine shrimp the size of rats, armored, twitching, aggressive, stripping flesh in the dark. Predatory worms, polychaetes, slither across the trench floor bristled, segmented, with snapping, extendable jaws that look like something from a sci-fi horror film. They feel vibrations, they hunt by chemical trails, and they've adapted to a world without light, without mercy. And that's just the beginning. Because the weirdest life isn't what we see, it's what we can't. Recently, scientists pulled sediment samples from the trench floor and discovered over 7,500 entirely new microbial genomes. Many of these organisms have never been seen before. Some eat metals, some survive without oxygen, some might metabolize methane, and some, we don't even know how they're alive. This microbial world operates under rules we're still deciphering. In some cases, it's chemically alien. Life powered not by the sun, but by sulfur, hydrogen, and deep sea chemistry. It may be ancient, it may be dangerous, and it's barely understood. But the trench isn't just biologically strange, it's geologically violent. 
The entire region is under constant tectonic stress. The Pacific Plate is subducting beneath the Philippine Sea Plate, a grinding, dragging, planet-shaping process that never stops. This movement doesn't just create the trench, it also builds pressure in the rocks themselves. When that pressure slips, earthquakes happen. And not just any earthquakes. Subduction zones like this are where the world's most powerful quakes originate. In 2011, a similar subduction fault off the coast of Japan triggered a magnitude 9.1 quake and a devastating tsunami. The Mariana Trench sits along that same global belt of instability, the Ring of Fire. Imagine that kind of energy released directly beneath 11 kilometers of water. Seismic waves would race through the ocean crust, shaking the trench walls like a soda can in a fist. Sediment layers, already thick and precarious, could collapse. Hundreds of billions of tons of mud and rock tumbling into the abyss, a landslide on a scale we can barely simulate. And that collapse wouldn't just bury whatever tech or life is on the floor. It could trigger a chain reaction. See, buried within the sediment are methane hydrates, crystalline structures of water and gas frozen under extreme pressure. If disturbed, they can destabilize. Suddenly, the result, a massive bubble column of gas erupting upward, water density drops, any submersible above it could lose buoyancy and fall like a stone. And that's not even the worst case scenario. A rapid release of methane could trigger explosions, collapse adjacent slopes, or even fuel underwater shock waves. All of this, quake, landslide, gas burst, could generate a tsunami, racing outward at jetliner speeds. And here's the nightmare fuel. There might be no warning, no alarms, just the slow rumble of the trench walls starting to move. Then there's the water itself. At the bottom of the trench, Temperatures hover just above freezing. Water this cold is heavy, dense enough to sap heat instantly from anything that enters it. For a human, unprotected exposure would mean immediate shock, followed by unconsciousness in seconds. Even machines, batteries, electronics, cameras fail faster at this depth. And it's dark. Not just dark, but utterly lightless. Beyond about 500 meters, the sun is gone. At 11,000 meters, you're in permanent night. Only bioluminescence breaks the black, flashes of eerie green, pulsing red, silent blue. Some creatures use it to hunt, others to lure, many to hide. Down here, light is a weapon. There are jellies longer than school buses, coiling and drifting like glowing netting. Siphonophores, Colonial animals that act as one, trailing tendrils that sting, entangle, digest. Some pulse with light in rhythmic waves. Others vanish into transparency, a living minefield in the abyss. You might spot the faint flicker of a football fish, a kind of angler fish with a lure on its forehead and teeth like razors. It opens its jaw wide enough to swallow something half its size. The males. They're parasites, fusing permanently into the females, their bodies reduced to little more than gonads and nerves. Nature's horror stories don't need fiction. There's the goblin shark, a deep sea predator that looks more like a fossil. Its jaw launches forward like a mousetrap, faster than the eye can follow, to snatch anything that gets too close. Then, rat tails and cusk eels, bottom cruisers with massive heads and tapering bodies, always watching, always hungry, and the Dumbo octopus. Cute? Maybe? Until it unfolds its webbed arms and glides like a ghost through a graveyard of bones, all of them adapted to survive here, to own this place, to outlast anything we send down. And still, this place holds more dangers than even its monsters or its pressure. Because it's not just what lives in the trench, it's what might. We've only scratched the surface, or more accurately, we've barely pierced the skin. Even our most advanced submersibles have mapped only a small fraction of the trench in high resolution. The walls stretch for over 2,500 kilometers, and most of it remains unseen, unmapped, and unmeasured. There could be cracks, caves, even entire undersea chambers. And we wouldn't know. 
We've never drilled into its deepest layers, never sent permanent sensors, never placed long-term monitors at Challenger Deep, which means this trench could be hiding anything. And it's not just fantasy. Scientists have already pulled sediment samples from the floor and discovered over 7,500 new microbial genomes, life forms we've never seen before. Some of them eat metal, others live entirely without oxygen. Some may rely on sulfur, hydrogen, even methane, completely different biochemical rules than the surface. In other words, alien ecosystems here on Earth, and we're not even talking about what hasn't been found. Some scientists speculate that megafauna, huge undiscovered animals, could exist in the deeper, untouched zones. Creatures adapted not just to survive under crushing pressure, but to thrive in the isolation, an organism that has never seen light, never experienced a predator. That's had millions of years to grow undisturbed. It's scientifically plausible, and that's what makes it terrifying. And then there's the human element. Every time we go down there, we're rolling dice with physics. In 1960, the Trieste made history, the first humans to reach Challenger Deep. Jacques Picard and Don Walsh descended in a steel sphere hanging from a gasoline-filled float. The sphere groaned, a window cracked, and yet they made it. 20 minutes on the seafloor, they reported mud, life, silence. Then came James Cameron in 2012, the first solo descent. His sub, Deep Sea Challenger, was cutting edge. It still shook from the strain. He described the bottom as lifeless, lunar, as if he'd landed on another world. But this world wants to crush you. Even today, our most advanced submersible, the limiting factor, operates with paranoia. Every bolt, every weld, every system is triple checked because a micro fracture invisible to the naked eye can become fatal at 11,000 meters. There's no GPS, no radio, no rescue. If something goes wrong, no one is coming. You'd be a ghost in the deepest graveyard on earth. And yet we go back because the trench calls to something primal in us, a hunger for the unknown, the forbidden, the edge of what we're allowed to touch. It's not outer space, it's here. It's Earth, but every meter down feels like we're leaving the planet behind. And this is what haunts us. Not just the known dangers, the predators, the pressure, the chemical vents, but what we haven't found yet, what may never be found. The Mariana Trench is a wound in the planet, a scar that never heals. And inside it, something is always shifting, changing, hiding. Every tremor might be the first in a chain reaction, a landslide, a gas release, a rupture that starts deep and ends on a beach thousands of miles away. One slip, one quake. That's all it would take to unleash something devastating. And what if something's already been disturbed? We've sent more probes in the last decade than in the previous 50 years combined. Each one stirs the sediment, sends vibrations through the dark, shines light where there should be none. We're awakening a place that evolved in silence, and there's a cost to that. We know this trench holds methane hydrates, gas frozen in crystalline form deep beneath the mud. If disturbed, they can explode. If released in bulk, they could fuel tsunamis, or worse, alter the ocean chemistry. Some scientists fear a chain reaction, earthquake, landslide, methane release, tsunami, a domino collapse from the bottom of the world, and the signs are already there. Hydrothermal vents bubbling more frequently, microquakes detected on sensors, volcanic mounds that weren't there five years ago. This place isn't dead. It's alive, shifting, breathing. And the more we observe, the more we realize how little we understand. And maybe that's the most terrifying part. Not what we know, but what we don't. The Mariana Trench is Earth's last true mystery. It could hold the key to life's origins or to its extinction. It could contain monsters, microbes, or mechanisms of disaster we haven't dreamed of yet. And every time we descend, we come a little closer to touching that truth. So we ask the question, if this is what we've already seen, what else is waiting in the dark? What else is hiding where no light dares reach? 
And are we, as a species, ready to meet it? And if the sights don't haunt you, the sounds will. You imagine the bottom of the world is silent. It isn't. The trench is a sensory trap, a planetary echo chamber where the groans of earthquakes and the scream of ship propellers are trapped in the dark. But recently, sensors picked up something else. That sound is real. Scientists call it the bio-twang. They say it's a new type of minka whale, a biological call. But listen again. It doesn't sound like biology. It sounds like a machine. It sounds like a frequency. And here's the part that keeps oceanographers awake at night. These sounds aren't always random. Some sensors pick them up specifically when our equipment starts pinging. We assume we are the ones exploring the trench. We assume we are the observers looking down into the fishbowl. But when you hear that mechanical shriek answering our sonar, you realize the terrifying truth. We aren't the only ones listening. And that sound, it wasn't a call, it was a reply.